one of the world's most famous quoted verses that I pretty much believe everyone knows from celebrities to athletes to motivational speakers to religious leaders is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So most people know John 3.16 as the gospel. I believe when I heard John 3.16 for the first time, it was presented to me as the gospel. And what was being explained is that God created men. Men sin that caused men to be separate from God. And so God had to send his one and only son to die for the whole world. And in the Lord or in God, sending his son demonstrated and expressed his love for us. And if we believe that he sent his son to die for us and that through his son we are saved, then we can have eternal life. We can spend forever with God. But the gospel does not stop there. John 3.16 is not the overall gospel. That's just a part. That's just a piece of the gospel because when you read the beginning of John chapter 3, Jesus is talking about to Nicodemus of how you have to be born of the water and of the spirit. Wait a minute. You just said all I have to do is believe on you. All I have to do is believe that God sent you in the world to die for my sins. But yeah, you have to be born of the water, which is baptism, and of the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, you will not see the kingdom or enter into the kingdom. And so you must be born again. And so the gospel isn't just limited to John 3.16. The gospel is go and sin no more. The gospel is go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. The gospel is go and sell all that you have and follow me for I have, I have treasures for you in heaven. The gospel is the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they, what I say, blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. And so the gospel is a lot of different things. The gospel is repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The gospel is believe on the only begotten son. The gospel is repentance. Turn from your wickedness, turn from this lifestyle, turn from your idols, turn from your ways, turn from your mindsets. And so we have to understand that we are not limited to just John 3, 16. I want to read what Jesus says because he talks about how he did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save people. So Jesus didn't come to forgive your sins. Jesus came so that you can be saved and that through you being saved, your sins can be forgiven. And so John 3 verse 15, I'm going to start at, and this is red letter words. And Jesus says that whomsoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved because sin automatically disqualifies us from spending forever with God because it separates us from God. And so I can't spend forever with God if I am in sin. There's a gap. But Jesus came to bridge that gap. Jesus came to close that gap. He's the mediator. He's the one that stands in the middle. And makes up the hedge. And so it says in verse 18, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. And so the fact that you do not believe that Jesus sent his son, you believe in another God, you believe in another religion. Some people believe in God. Some people won't necessarily say that they, will, they believe in Jesus. But Jesus says that no man can go to the Father but through him. And so there's a, a wide variety of people who they're religious to some degree. They're, they're spiritual to some degree. And, and they believe that there, that there is a God. They don't necessarily believe, believe in Jesus. You know, most people believe that he's the white man's um, religion. He's the white man's book and a white man's person that he was made up to be thrown on the black people. So there's a lot of different stories and beliefs as far as when it comes to the actual gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Now you know that there's so much truth behind the name of Jesus because there's power in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is the one that you see the devil mocking. And he he mocks Jesus through people. People will wear an upside down cross. People wear, wear a shirt with Jesus graffiti on it, blaspheming, having just all kind of stuff. I, I'm not even going to go into details and name different things that I've seen and come across, but you don't see people blaspheming and mocking Buddha. You don't see people blaspheming and mocking the Hindu gods. You don't see people blaspheming and mocking the Pope or Queen Elizabeth. Like you don't see people doing that because you, you, you understand to some degree where the power lies, where the power is. That power is in Jesus Christ. And so it doesn't matter what you believe. If you do not go through the door, then Jesus calls you a thief and a robber. It doesn't matter that you've studied other books. It doesn't matter that you've been to seminary school. It doesn't matter that you found and you've researched this on the other side of the world or you went to Google or you went to Yahoo. It does not matter. Or MSN. It, it doesn't matter what you've come across. The truth will still stand. The word of God says, let God be true in every man alive. And so it doesn't matter what knowledge I have. It doesn't matter what information I've come across. It doesn't matter what I found out and what this person may have told me. Let God be true in every man alive. At the end of the day, if I don't go through this door, which is Jesus, which is Jesus Christ, then I am a thief and a robber. I've gone up some other way. And so it doesn't matter that you may say, well, you know, the real gospel is for the black Hebrew Israelites or the real gospel is for the Mexicans or the real gospel is for the Caucasians. No, the word of God says that, that God sent his son to die for the whole world, not a specific race, not a group of, of one racial group of people. No, for the black, for the white, for the Asians, for the Mexicans, for the children, for the old people, for the middle class people. He died for the whole world. And so that's not excluding anybody. Nobody's excluded, but you have to go through the door. You have to go through the door. You have many people that are trying to open and go through different doors thinking that they're going to get to God. And you got people who believe, who believe that they have access to God and they call on God and they pray to God. Yeah, there's a lot of different people in, in the music industry and in the Hollywood industry. And every now and then, I'll hear something about how that celebrity, that artist got saved. And they'll talk about God. But you will never hear them say the name of Jesus. And if they do, they are not renouncing their ways that they walked in when they were in the world. You don't see them renouncing. You don't see them confessing. You don't see true repentance. True repentance. You see a lot of worldliness. You see a lot of carnality. And so you have to question what what really is the gospel and how is that to look in our lives? Because I can say that I believe John 3, 16, but if my actions are not lining up with that, then this is just words. The Muslim, the Muslims can believe this. They can believe that it's in the book. They can believe that this is true. That doesn't mean that they're going to commit and, and repent of their ways. The Muslims believe it. You know, the other false religions out there believe it, like the, the black Hebrew Israelites, the seven Adventists, the Jehovah Witness, the Mormons. Yeah. And whatever else is out there, the, the, the masonry religion. Yeah. They believe this. They believe this. What was hard to believe this, but they don't believe it to a point where it's going to cause them to repent. They don't believe it to a degree where it's going to cause change in their life and it's going to cause them to turn from their lifestyles. It says, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. And so you can, you can think that you have God in your heart all you want. You can think that you pray and he hears you. If you are not going through the door, if you are not doing it in the name of Jesus, then you are serving another God. I'm just, I'm just going to put it that way. I'm going to make it plain and simple. You are serving another God, period. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And man loves darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light. Neither comes to the light lest their deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they were all wrought in God. And so this is a part of the gospel. It does not just stop at John 3.16. No, the fact that you actually have to believe 
and the one and only begotten son. And you actually have to convert. You have to follow after him. You got to follow after him. Yeah. You have to renounce your dead words. You have to renounce your lifestyle. You have to renounce your idols. You have to renounce your, your mindsets and your perspectives. You have to renounce the evil because he said man, man loves evil. And because man loves evil, man is not going to come to God knowing that God sent his son to die for you. Most people will say, well, I didn't, I didn't ask God to do that. Who, who asked God to send his son to die for me? I didn't ask God to do that. But most people don't know the full gospel or have a clear understanding of the full gospel. Most people don't know that the brutal punishment that Jesus took on the cross was supposed to be them. That was supposed to be you. Most people don't understand. And this is why most people don't really believe is because they don't have a full understanding of the actual gospel. Most people don't know that not only did Jesus die for them, but Jesus died so that you would not have to. He died so that you didn't have to. He took on what you were supposed to be going through and what you were supposed to take on. Yeah, he took on this burden. The burden of the world was heavy, but he carried it on his shoulders and he took it to the cross. That's him bearing his cross. Jesus did not bear the cross for himself. He was flawless. He was sinless. He was the precious lamb of God and he knew no sin. And so that cross that he bared, that cross that he took and that he walked with all the way to Calvary, that was for you. That was for the people of the world. And he did that so that you can be saved. Not so that your sins can be forgiven, but so that you can spend forever with him. He saved you. He redeemed you. But most people are not going to live a way that communicates God, I, I thank you. God, I'm grateful. God, I love you. You saved me. Yeah. You were on your way to the lake of fire. And that's where most people are headed right now. Most people are headed to the lake of fire. Most people heard the gospel or heard John 3, 16, whether they saw it on somebody's body tattooed, whether they saw it on a billboard, whether they saw it on somebody's car, whether they saw it on TV, whether they saw it on the, the billboard at work or or the poster board at work, or just a little sign in somebody's yard. You saw it. You saw it. Maybe you've heard a, a famous celebrity quote it. You've heard it. You've heard it. And because you've heard it, you're going to be held accountable. You're going to be held accountable. You are fully aware that there is a God. You are fully aware that you were separated from God. You are fully aware that God had to do something for you to be back reconciled with him. And that was his son. And he says that if you believe in his son. Which you are fully aware of. Then you can have life. That's not just simply saying well I believe. So that means that I'm going to spend forever with God. That's that once saved. Always saved mentality. No you have to actually put forth. You have to show yourself worthy to follow God. You have to show yourself worthy to take up your cross and follow after him daily. That takes self-denial. Yeah, and so it's not just simply believing with your mouth, but believing with your heart. That That's supposed to manifest action and, and, and movement and change and transformation. I can say that I believe if I don't pay my bill, <laughs> FPNL is going to cut my light off or whatever your, your local light service is. You can believe that they're going to cut your light off, but if you do not pay them, guess what's going to happen? They're going to cut it off for real. They're going to cut it off. You must say, I, I believe that, yeah, but you didn't pay your bill, so you didn't believe it enough. Or, you know, your car note. You can believe that, man, if I don't if I don't pay my car note, then they're going to repo it. Man, if I don't go to the bank and deposit something to cover my fee, then... That negative is not going to go away. Yeah, you can, you can believe that all day. You can believe that that's true. But if you don't go and actually put money in the bank, if you don't go and actually pay your car note, then yes, your car is going to get repoed. Yes, the bank is going to close out your account eventually. Yes, if you don't pay your rent or your mortgage, then your house is going to go for foreclosure or you're going to be evicted. Out. So you can, we can have, have all of these different beliefs. Man, if I don't stop at a stop sign, there's a possibility I can get a ticket. If I, if I run a red light, there's a possibility I can get a ticket. If I don't go the certain amount, amount of, of mileage in a school zone, I can get a ticket. And so I can believe all of these things. But if I don't follow through with it, then I really didn't believe it in the first place. 
I really didn't believe it. Yeah, you get pulled over and you're trying to figure out why you got pulled over. And they're going to say, sir, ma'am, did you know that you were going double the speed limit in a school zone limit of 15 miles per hour? Oh, I didn't know that. I believed that, but I, I didn't know that, you know, I would get pulled over for something like this. Me, no. I, I, I never thought that I could be, you know, getting a ticket for, for driving 45 miles in the school zone. Yeah. And so we can believe the word of God, but if our actions are not lining up with what we believe, then we really don't believe. We really don't believe. And that's most people's story. Most people do not really believe in, in God, in Jesus. And you may say, I do believe in God. Listen, Jesus says him and his father are one. So to believe in the almighty God, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, and I, I might have put it out of order, but you know what I mean, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to believe in him is to believe in Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father, and he testifies of my work. He says, what I do is what I've seen the father do, and I don't do anything without him. And so to believe in God is to believe in Jesus, period, period. If you disagree with that, it's because you believe in another God and therefore you have idols and you serve another God. And the word of God says, you shall, you shall serve the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. And so I cannot say I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. I cannot say that I believe in Jesus and I do not believe in God because him and his father are one. Jesus was God in the flesh. He took on human form and he suffered a bad death for you, for you and I, so that we did not have to perish because people for, people overlooked that perish part. What does that mean? Perish. No, everybody goes to heaven. We know John 3, 16, but we overlook the things that we want to overlook. We, we cherry pick from the Bible. We cherry pick from the Bible. Yeah. Believe in him. Shall whoever, whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Perish. Wait a minute. I thought you were a loving God. That's what I believe in the Jehovah Witness religion when I was a Jehovah Witness. Wait a minute. God is not going to allow me to suffer. God is not going to cause pain upon me and affliction upon me. He loves me and I love him. Although I am living in open fornication, although I curse like a seller, although I steal and I lie, I cheat on tests. Yeah, but he loves me though. That was a lie of the enemy. That was a lie of the enemy. No. The word of God is plain and simple. It is what it says that it is. If I do not believe, if I do not comply, if I do not take up my cross and follow after him daily, then it is what, what it says it is. If you do not believe, you're going to perish. I don't know if people think that that's a, a, a metaphor or a figurative language or something symbolic. I don't know what people think that is, but that, that part of the scripture is overlooked and thrown out the window. No, that perish part, God doesn't do stuff like that. No, even your system punishes you and judges you when you commit a crime you don't steal stuff from from walmart and then go before the judge and tell the judge judge i know you're merciful and i know that you're long-suffering and i know that you're loving and i know that you want to stay in my heart no that judge is going to give you parole that judge is going to give you community service hours and that judge is going to lock you up behind bars and so just like in the natural how if you do the crime you got to pay the time meaning there's a consequence for your action that's the same way with god that's where our system comes from. Men understood that, oh, God judges people for their actions. And so because man is well, man is out of control, man needs control or needs to be controlled. Man needs laws. That's what laws is. You know that, right? That's why we have laws implemented. Why? Because people are crazy. And so what our government has set up is some common sense, some common sense, a form of control, because if they did not have street lights, if they did not have intersection lights, you would just, you would work through or you would not be mindful of the person on your right or to your left because you would feel like, well, I, I, I need to go where I'm going is more important right now. I got here first. And so they have to put up intersection lights. They have to put up street lights because they know People were breaking the people's cars if everything was in the dark. They have to put stop signs. They have to put pedestrian signs because you wouldn't let the person cross had not you been told because you're selfish in your heart. You're evil in your heart. That's why Jesus says man loves evil rather than darkness it's, or rather than light. We like darkness rather than light. It's in us to be evil. It's in me to run the red light. It's in me to run the stop sign. It's in me to not let this person cross the road. It's in me to just... 
take people's stuff, steal from people, feeling like, well, I have a need too. I'm struggling too. And so our government has to make a, a, a system to where there's laws implemented that if you do something wrong, if you steal from people, if you break into people's, people's cars, if you kill people, if you lie on your taxes or in other, in other governmental things, then you're going you're gonna to get fined for this. You're going to get locked up for this. You're going to go to prison. You're going to go to jail. You're going to be executed, whatever, whatever you do. Yeah, because men are wicked and, and we need that control. No, somebody needs to tell you what to do because if somebody does not tell you what to do, then you're going to be a, a wild person. You're going to be a crazy person. You're going to drive on the, on the other side of the road. You're going to drive into the Walmart store. You're going to drive on the grass. You're going to do everything that you want. You're going to run over the, the, the bicyclist. Yeah, you're going to do all kinds of things. You're going to run past the school bus, although the school bus has the stop signs out. You're going to do all kinds of things. So what if what if we didn't have no laws? What if our system had no laws? This would be a crazy place. Most of us would not even go outside. And we probably wouldn't even need to because the, the crazy people that are going to be worse than us, they would just come in our house. Well, there's no law that tells me I can't do this and I'm not going to be penalized for it. Yeah, if people knew that they were not going to be penalized for certain things, they would break all kinds of laws. Yeah, you know what? I would go into Walmart. I would go to Target. I would go to Macy's and steal. But because I know that shoplifters will be persecuted, I'm not even going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you know what? I will get fined if I go double in the speed zone. So because I know that I'm fully aware, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I could just go up into the White House and that crazy, but I know I'll be killed. So I'm not going to do that. I could walk up in the airport and, and say the word, you know, I, I'm going to shoot everybody up or terrorist. I could just say the word terrorist. And, you know, I'll just have to, to, to get what's going to come for me. Yeah, they're going to arrest you or tackle you or tase you or shoot you. I don't know. But they have to set laws up because if they did not, you would not, you would not be able to control yourself. And so bad people need laws. You need to be told what to do. And so with God, how much more? No, God already knows how man works. He's designed you. He's formed you. He's made you. And so he already knows that in you because of sin, because you may say, but God made me this way. No, but sin came into the earth. Sin came into the world and that brought a curse upon you. And so because that has brought a curse upon you in your body, sin is within you. The word of God says that in you dwells no good thing. There is no good thing in you unless you have the Holy Spirit and the power of God operating on the inside. Then without God, without the power and the spirit of God, you will do anything that your mind can think of. You will do it. And if you don't act out on it, you will at least think it. And so God has to set laws for us. Yeah. And if you break them, guess what? He has to stick to his word. Just like the natural law. You can't be trying to explain yourself to the police. But sir, you know, I have five kids, sir. I just lost my job, sir. But I'm tired. I had a long day, sir. Listen, I woke up on the wrong side of the road. That officer is going to say, I will see you in court. I hope you have a good rest of your day. They don't care. They don't want to hear your story. They don't, they don't want to hear your excuses. That's how God is going to be when you, when you have to stand before God. God is not going to care at the fact that you grew up and your parents abandoned you. They neglected you. They, they rejected you. Your dad was abusive. Your mom was, you know, a prostitute. She slept around for money. Your dad was an alcoholic. Your, your grandmother, all she did was drink and smoke all day. Your grandfather, all he did was watch porn all day and you were left to yourself or you were touched inappropriately. God is not going to want to hear that. God is not going to want to hear your sad story because he's going to say, but I sent my son for you to save you. That's, that's the thing. I knew you needed saving. I knew that you, you were raised in a messed up household. I knew that you came into a messed up world. That's why God fixed it. God knew. He knows that this is a messed up world. The world is a messed up place. People are doing wicked things. People are aborting babies. People are selling children for money. They're doing sex trafficking with children and, and you know, young teenagers and even, even adult women. They're doing this. They're doing this. Your world, your government, they're doing this. And God sees this and God knows that the world is messed up. God knows that people are stealing. People are selling your information. When you get those emails and those phone calls that you never agreed to and you're trying to figure out how this person got your number, yeah, your government is selling your information. They're selling your name, your birthday, your phone number. They're, they're giving that out. And so the world is a messed up place and God knows that. And that's why he sent his son to save us because we were in need of saving. Yeah. He would only save someone if 
they were drowning. You would only save someone if, if you were a lifeguard. You would only save someone if they were actually drowning. Everyone else that seems to be okay, you would leave them to themselves, although they're drowning too. But they've convinced themselves that they got this. No, I got this. I know how to swim. Okay, well, I'm only going to help the one that's actually drowning and it's visible to me that they're actually drowning. Yeah, those are the ones that God is going to save. Those are the ones he's going to call for because he's redeemed you by the blood of his son. His son, his son's blood, it, it was sufficient, the word of God says. It says that it pleased the father to bruise the son. God watching his one and only son suffer for you and I, it pleased him. What? That pleased you? Yeah, because that, that, was, that was supposed to be you. You were supposed to be whooped and beaten. You were supposed to be spit upon. You were the one supposed to have a crown of thorns on your head. You were the one that was supposed to be mocked and put to an open shame. You were. You were the one supposed to have holes in your hands the size of a quarter. You were, in case you didn't know how big those holes in his hands were. It wasn't a little, a little small, little two-pick hole. No, it was a size of a quarter. It was a size of a quarter. And so... If you can just imagine how big a quarter is, though, that's that's a pretty big hole. But he did all of that for you. You. And so, although we live in a messed up world and we've we've gone through things, listen, we cannot allow what we've gone through to cause us to miss out on God's love for us because he sent his son to die for everyone. That's true. But what if I feel entitled? What if I feel like God, my life is messed up, you owe me? I saw someone yesterday make a post and they said how they hate their lives, how they wish God would have never allowed them to be born, how they wish God would have allowed their mother to abort them, and how they wish that tomorrow they wake up and do and do not breathe. I don't even want to breathe. Yeah, this is what the enemy is doing in case you didn't know. People are actually going through things right now. They're fighting for their lives because the world is messed up. The enemy already hates them, so he's going to make you feel like your life has no value. He's going to make you feel like John 3.16 is irrelevant and that that's not for you. He's going to make you feel like there's no hope and that the only way out is suicide. And that if you if you take that route, that things are going to be better for you. Yeah, he wants you to be a liar like he is. He wants you to be deceived like he is. Yeah, and you have to know that there's hope. You need to... Get to a place where you can actually cry out to God because I'm telling you, that's the only one that's going to save you. I lost someone very close to me two months ago and this person, they went through a lot. Don't get me wrong. They went through a lot. However, instead of them turning to God and allowing God to actually heal them of their wounds and to heal them of the trauma that they've been through, they turned to drugs. They turned to drugs and guess what? That same thing that they turned to took them out. This person was very close to me. It was my sibling. It was my sibling. Yeah. This person lived a very messed up life. Do you think that God is going to overlook look that on judgment day? Because we all have, have our shares of, of troubles in this life. At the same time, we have to know that there is hope. And God make, makes that hope available through his son. And so although I had a messed up childhood, I don't have to be bound to my emotions and the the memory of my body the trauma that my body holds i don't have to be a slave to that i can be free the lord can actually erase those memories he can erase the trauma so that you you don't even think about that anymore you no longer even look at your body that way like like it's just like it's just a toy you don't even look at yourself as a sex object anymore because the lord has healed you and he's broken those chains off of you and so i wish that my sibling would have surrendered her heart to the Lord because she was a very broken person. She was a very messed up person, but she turned to other things and that thing took her out. It took her out. And so God does not desire that we perish in our sin. The wages of sin, the payment for sin is death. If you die in sin, somebody has to pay for that. Jesus already paid for your sins on the cross, but if you take the sin back, that he paid for on the cross, then you're going to have to pay for that. You're going to have to stand before him and give an account. Just like with our system. Wait a minute. Somebody got to pay for this crime. I don't know who broke the window. I don't know who broke into the convenience store. You were on the passenger side. You're guilty by association. You said you weren't the one that did it, but you're in the car with this person. Somebody has to pay for this. You all can point fingers all you want and say, but he did it. But he picked me up. But he had the gun. Listen, somebody got to pay for this crime. That's how it is in this world. Somebody has to pay. 
Whether it's in your pockets, money-wise, or it's your time. You sitting behind bars for X amount of years. Somebody has to pay for this. And so with God, somebody has to pay for these sins. If you take sin on, and if you live in it, and you die in it, when you stand before God, you're going to have to pay for that. And that's going to be through death. That's going to be through death. Yeah, your payment to cover this cost is through death. And so that's going to be your that's going to be your payment. Death. You have to die. Not just here, but in the next life. You have to die for eternity. And so God does not want that to be us. He does not desire that all that, that any should perish. He doesn't take pleasure in those that he has to send to hell. That's hard. That's hard. That's really, really hard. You know what I'm saying? None of us, God forbid, will take pleasure in seeing our children behind bars for something that they did. Although they may have been wrong, I've not met one person that, that says, you know what? My child should be behind bars. Unless they were a, a cold-blooded blooded murderer, then okay, I understand. Like, no, that, that person right there is crazy. <laughs> they have some devils. They are listening to some strange voices. They need to be retained. They need to be locked up. That's different. But, you know, if your child, you know, your teenage child made a mistake or this is their first time getting caught, they did something wrong, you don't want to see them behind bars. You don't want to see them go away forever because you love them. And so you know that that would be hard. And so how much more God? But you see, God can't go back on his words, just like the judge. Whatever the judge has finalized, they can't go back on that word. That's how it was back in the Old Testament with the kings. Yeah. King Darius, when he made a decree that nobody could pray to any other God except him, when Daniel got caught praying and the king, King Darius, he felt really, really bad. He felt bad like, oh man, I've been tricked. Yeah, but you can't go back on your word because you... You made this decree, you made this order, and then you signed that you cannot go back. It doesn't matter how bad he feels at the fact that Daniel is about to get thrown into a den of lions. Wait a minute. This is a messed up situation right now. That's Daniel is my friend, and I have to throw him into a den of lions? That's messed up, but I can't go back on my word. It is as I say that it is. No, this, this is what it is. I can't go back on my word. Same thing when I forget his name. He was after his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, when... Daniel was able to interpret the, the writing on the wall, although he told the king, yeah, and after this, you're going to die. The king still had to give Daniel the, the jury and the gold and the crown and the robe. He had to give him all of these things. Man, that's messed up. You just told me I'm going to die. I need to take my stuff. And no, I can't take my stuff because I, I made a decree. I said it. And so because back then the kings, whatever they would say, they had to follow through with it. There, there, there was no, but those are my children. But those are, you know. Those are my, 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 my family members. No, it reminds me of Jephthah, Jephthah, who he told the Lord that whatever walks through the threshold of my door, I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice to you because the, the children of Israel like had, they had just gained victory. And so people were celebrating, people were in a good mood. You know how you can be in a good mood and you just be loose. You'd be so happy. You just say anything that come to your mouth. You know, God, if you get me out of this, I will give you everything. And God does. And you're just so happy. And then it's like you don't follow through with your word. So Jephthah, uh, Jephthah you know, he said, well, whatever comes through this threshold, I'm going to sacrifice to you. Do you know that this man's daughter walked through the threshold? The first thing that walked through was, was his daughter. Not a lamb, not a sheep, not a ram, his daughter. And do you know he had to stick, he had to stand on his word. Man, that's messed up. Why you ain't tell me my daughter was going to walk through the threshold? Why Why didn't you tell me this before I opened my mouth? Why didn't you tell me my daughter was going to walk through? Otherwise, I would have I would ever said that out of my mouth. Yeah, but he was so happy and so caught up in the mood that he was just loose. And so guess what he had to do? He had to sacrifice his daughter. And so the point that I am making is when we stand before God, God is not going to be able to go back on his word. Whatever God says is what it's going to be. And so whether or not we decide to believe in a full gospel or not, when we stand before God, we're going to be without excuse. We're going to be without excuse. And we're going to have to give an account according to everything that we did. Yeah. Your whole life is written down and it's on record. And so you're not going to be able to fool God like you can fool a, a, a earthly judge or a worldly judge. You can talk your way out of being locked up and, you know, you know, having to do community service hours. You can, you can lie your way out of there. You can kind of manipulate the situation and, and plead. You know, not guilty and, and, and plead the fifth or whatnot, plead the third. You know, you can do that kind of stuff with the judges to some degree. You get a good lawyer who can lie real good and who can, you know, beat this case. You know, you, you might can get off. You might can get off easy. But with God, oh, no, Jesus was your lawyer. He was your lawyer. And 
He already defeated the case, but if I reject the offer, if I reject what he's what he's offering right now, then what I get is what I get. Yeah. Most people are going to find themselves on a broad way leading to destruction. It's a sad it's a sad thought, it's a sad truth, but it's it's reality. It's reality. And so my encouragement is that we believe on the only begotten son, not just with our words, because many people are professing with their mouths that they believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he died for the world. But their hearts, no. The word of God says that God looks on the heart, not the outer appearance. I can look like I'm sold out for God all I want to. But if I don't really believe in my heart to where actions are manifesting, then these are just words. Yeah. You people, you draw near to me with your with your mouth and your lips, but your hearts are far from me. A lot of people are drawing close to God with their mouth, and they know how to speak. They know how to use their words, but their hearts are far from God. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. Yeah, you did things in my name, but you did that in your name. You didn't do it in my name. And so my encouragement is that we grasp hold of we grasp hold of the full gospel of who Jesus Christ was and is. He is the Son of God. He will always be the son of God and he is coming back and he's returning in his glory. And so be encouraged in Jesus name.